Stress leaves clues, but are you listening? It's important to note, first of all, that stress is normal. Okay, we need to start normalizing stress because it is a natural response that every single human being goes through at multiple points within their life when they're facing changing and challenging times. But what we've done is we've normalized stress to the point where it's over the top. It's a bad thing. It's too extreme where it becomes unhealthy for us. So it's important to know that stress this, our stress responses can come from mental, emotional, or physical um, parts of us. So that could be anxiety, it could be pain, tension, overthinking, gut issues. It could be all these different things that can show up in, um, in, our, in our lives that can determine whether stress is coming from a mental, emotional, or physical standpoint. And you already know how stress shows up for you, don't you? Let's be honest. The thing is, though, is we we kind of brush it off. We use this generalized, generic answer when people ask us how we are, and we say things like, "Oh, I'm okay, but just a bit a bit stressed," or "Work's been stressful." And that's where we draw the line. We don't dig deeper under that label that we've given ourselves. We just say, "Yes, we're stressed," and then we we bury everything else underneath it. But then that becomes a, a bit of a problem because we start to think that stress is at work or stress is in my family dynamic or stress is outside of us and that's really where the problem lies because stress isn't about what's outside of us it's how we're responding inside right stress isn't about what's happening in your life it's about what's happening inside of you and this is what needs our attention drastically so that we can start to have a healthier relationship with stress in our everyday lives absolutely and what i want to kind of discuss now is the what is the actual stress response just so you've got a clear understanding of what's happening inside of us when we do feel stressed so like i said it's a, it's a normal response we get physiological response when we experience stress and that what happens is cortisol which is our stress hormone and adrenaline raises it switches on our what we call our sympathetic response this is our fight or flight and when this happens is our body goes through this chemical reaction where obviously our heart rate increases our palms may get sweaty all these things happen now what happens is the body will determine whether the stress is needed or not because that stress, initial response you can't control it's going to happen when some change or challenge happens within your life but when you kind of look at it and you think okay this challenge is passed or this change is passed or this threat is passed the body will automatically calm everything down it will lower cortisol low adrenaline and you'll go into what we call the rest and digest or rest and recovery zone so where everything comes back to normal but the problem arises is when how, how we perceive the situation that we're in and instead of everything lowering even though the the sweatiness goes our heart rate calms down our stress is still switched on because how we're perceiving it we're still thinking and we're still perceiving that the situation is bad or something is um is not right and our stress response stays switched on and now the longer this stays on for it becomes very very unhealthy for us so it's important to understand that our perception of the situation leads to that that uh, increase and that that consistency of experiencing stress even sometimes we might not even know it so it's important to understand the perception of our situation which is causing our stress response to switch on and stay on for a long long time and one of the biggest mistakes that we make is trying to change the things outside of us before we check what's going on inside of us. So we perceive, like Jonathan said, we perceive this 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 threat or this problem or this this time of change or challenge, and in it as if it's ongoing and if it is always there. And the reality is, it's just our reaction that is always there. But we tend to, as our solution, we try and change the job, we try and change the relationship, we try and change our financial situation. And but what tends to happen is we're still responding the same way even if those things outside of us change and that can become a bigger problem right what that does is that then leads to what we call stress stacking which is where we basically compound all of these stressful experiences our stress responses on all of the time we get an even more negative emotion attaching to our life experiences we then overthink everything we're comparing um, who we are today with who we were yesterday or wishing that we could just be like the way that we were before or that we could just be um, this person or that person and we, we end up kind of getting stuck in this space of stacking things up to the point where our cup is full and then we start just exploding we have these stress explosions where we snap at loved ones or we, we just get so overwhelmed that we're just like oh, I've had enough right and then we want to quit our job or we want to go and like do something that we wouldn't rationally and resourcefully want to do so that's what we call it, a stress explosion 
And this is this is happening really because we're living in this illusion. We're living in a stress illusion that stress is this thing outside of us. Whereas if we can start to get a grip on our own stress response and listen to the clues that stress reveals to us and leaves to us, then we will actually finally be able to find a place of calm, place of resource so that we can actually deal with our external environment in a way healthier and high performing way. Absolutely. And how you show up in the outside after and kind of that clues that revealing themselves. For example, you've got maybe you snap at other people, you become easy frustrated. That's a clue right there to show you that that stress response is kicking in. Maybe you obviously a negative thinker. You think negatively or you overthink to the point of paralysis. Again, that's another clue sitting right there. Maybe even being affected by other people's stress. You're letting other people's issues and stress really affect you and bring you down to that level. Well, maybe you're not even, it's just you not being consistent with your commitments. All these are little uh, kind of red flags and signals that is happening in your outside world that's telling you you're in that stress response. Okay, and that's time to start to listen to these clues and listen to what, 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 well, what all these clues are telling us, really. Yeah, and th th these, these things are happening, they're showing up for us, but one of the big problems is that we tend to then ignore them, right? Or we fall into some other common stress mistakes. And we've done an episode on that before. Um, you can go and check that out and just make sure you're not falling into any of those um, categories of, of the most common mistakes. But the reality is, is we've become so disconnected from one, where the stress actually lies. We, we think it's outside of us, but we've become disconnected from ourselves. And we either accept that we're an overthinker or we're an anxious person and then we just show up and identify as that person and we accept it or we just disconnect from it completely and we distract ourselves with things like scrolling on social media or by going out with our friends uh, just to forget right so you're not going out necessarily with the intention to to have fun and love and connect really the thing that's driving you to get out the door and go and connect is the the the, the need to put all of these problems or all of these clues on the back burner hoping they go away and that helps in the short term but not in the long term and as you know here at wellness theory we're all about lasting change so it's essential that we start to get a bit more connected with who it is that we are with these stress clues that are showing up for us so that they don't start to stack up and create the stress explosions that we described Exactly, and our outside life starts improving when we improve our inside life. It starts when we start to connect deeper with ourselves because our being, our body, is an ecosystem and everything is always working together to get your attention. It certainly is. So let's go into some of these clues a little bit more deeply. So we have obviously already mentioned a few, but you might be thinking, well, are they really clues? I'm not really sure. And are they really affecting my stress response that much? Because the reality is they are. So let's give you the, the first example being negative thinking and overthinking, purely because these are some of the most common ways that stress is manifesting itself right and it's always the the language that we're using within our thinking that's actually the problem because if you were overthinking positively all the time i doubt you'd actually be that stressed would you so the reality is we need to start to look at the language that we are using so for example if we're telling ourselves that I'm not good enough or we're questioning am I good enough to do this thing that I need to do at work or in my relationship or in, in, in my hobbies like whatever wherever it's showing up for you you're immediately putting yourself into a space of fear right you're immediately putting yourself into this emotional space maybe that's linked to shame from the past or something like that but the reality is is we are triggering those responses inside of us because of the language that we're using if we're wondering oh does this person really like me why are they talking to me um you know maybe i could have said this better or done that better when we have this this language going on all we're doing is is putting our stress response into this state of urgency which then leaves this whole trail of thinking and our thinking starts to spiral because we start to think okay oh maybe I could have done that better they pulled this face maybe it meant this maybe it meant that and then we just start spiraling 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 proving ourselves right that it was all negative in the first place and that creates this this illusion within us that there's there's there's, the, the world is negative it's a bad place and then we spiral when we just end up getting worse and worse and worse and worse and then we start to feel depressed we start to feel more anxious then when we go and speak to somebody again and the, the the it starts this very vicious cycle so if you can interrupt the language that is already you responding to these clues instead of just accepting that they're there 
Definitely. And if you take that and look at that from a physical perspective as well, because a lot of what we, like Charlotte said, a lot of what we tell ourselves has an effect in our body internally. And that can show up in many different ways as well from a physical standpoint. For example, tension in our body. If we're not thinking, we, if we think we're not good enough and we can't do something, we hold on to that, that feeling of tension from that thought that's coming through us. So tension, pain, even gut issues, skin issues, headaches, all these are symptoms that a lot of people experience and you might be experiencing right now, you might experience it in the past, but these are symptoms and clues that come up when we are experiencing stress, but from uh, showing up from a physical from a physical level. And that could show up because of many, many reasons. It could be because of how we're thinking. It could be because of what we're eating, because of lack of sleep. It could be many, many things that, that show up. But these are signs that if you are experiencing are clues to listen to, to say that, okay, I've got, I keep getting headaches or I keep feeling tension around my neck or around my back, or I keep uh, getting gut issues and bloated pain in my, in my abdominal region. So this is, well, okay, I'm in, I'm in a stress response. I'm stressed internally, my body is stressed. So I need to listen to that and listen to what it needs. So these, these, these clues are there all the time and we just need to listen to them very deeply and start to understand that physical pain isn't always because, of, oh, I had an injury five years ago. It's still there, it must be that. No, there's probably a deeper reason for that and it, it starts with that stress response and we need to understand that. Yeah, and instead of looking outside ourselves for the solution, is that first we look at the clues because there are so many of them, like Jonathan mentioned. It could be sleep, it could be a past injury, it could be the foods that you're eating, but we have to look at the clue first to then be able to backtrack to, to the root of the issue. And that's really the, the real beauty in the, the, the fact that stress is leaving clues for us all the time because that also means it's leaving us breadcrumbs to our solution. So emotionally as well, we, we have these clues, don't we? We have these feelings that show up, we have sensations in our body that show up and often unfortunately we try to fix it externally again like we mentioned earlier changing the relationship changing the where you are in the world all of these different things are external fixes to an inside problem so we need to start making sure that we're addressing okay well, what is the emotion what is the sensation rather than brushing it under the carpet um, and really just trying to have an external fix and sometimes that can even be with alcohol it can be with food consumption it can be through medication and the reality is is sometimes we just actually need to look behind the curtain we need to look behind these feelings behind these sensations to start to look inside for the solutions exactly i just want to share with you a bit about my story on how i well the clues that used to show up for me and how i kind of ignored them along the way and how what the consequence of that was so good well good few years ago now basically the first half of my career the first 10 years of my career i spent a lot of time training a lot eating strictly sacrificing my social life and everything else and really just getting extreme on my physical body and when this was happening i started to notice a lot of tension showing up and i started to notice a lot of anger showing up and frustration showing up um, within my life at the time and i never used to kind of correlate the two together in terms of what i was doing externally to what was happening internally inside so i used to ignore everything that was coming up and over time I started to get more niggles, more pain, more more discomfort, more angry, um, and to the point where I got the nickname of the Hulk. Um, so that was if you used to call me because I was so angry and aggressive all the time, but I never knew why. I always thought I was blaming other people for that. I was blaming everything around me for why I was feeling the way I was feeling. But again, I used to ignore, used to bring these emotions in. I used to bottle them up and just crack on with it. Every time I used to experience pain or any niggles or tension, I used to just ignore it, just think okay it's part of life it's part of what i'm doing i just got to crack on and fight through it and this happened for a good 10 years until a point where these niggles this pain this this anger started to become more intense they start it started to become more extreme to the point where i developed chronic pain and the chronic pain started in my back um, in between my shoulder blades and when it became so bad that it used to radiate up my spine into my head and used to affect my vision so this used to get so intense to the point where I, 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 I couldn't do a lot of things I could normally do. I couldn't train anymore. Even work was a struggle. Getting out of bed was a struggle. Sleeping was a struggle, uh, even more so than it used to be. So by n ignoring all these little symptoms that you started with general tension, a little bit of a niggle here and there, and a bit of um, outburst of anger, and I ignored all that, that started to compound itself. It started to get stronger and sh start shouting even louder. 
and until, until that intense chronic pain started to happen. And I experienced a chronic pain for four years before I, it got so intense where I, I couldn't ignore it anymore. I had to listen to my body. I had to listen to what was going on inside of me. And when I did that, well, that's when I'd say magic happened. And it wasn't magic, it was just because I was listening to my body, I was giving those, those clues attention, then good things started to happen. Pain started to ease off. Tension started to ease. I started to understand why I was become why I was so angry and aggressive all the time. And then over a period of a few weeks, I started, the more I listened and the more I started to do the work, uh, the deeper work I needed to do, my chronic pain went. My anger subsided massively, like to the point where I became very more, much more calm and grounded. And if you ask anyone that I used to work with before, compared to people who know me now, two completely different people. But it was me. But it was me not understanding and becoming aware of these clues and what, what, what these clues were telling me. So when I started to listen and I started to pay attention, that's when things started to ease off and I started to feel more free and flowing in my body and I started to feel more calm in how I approach situations, start to realize that everything, what was happening outside of me, was a reflection of what's happening inside of me. Because a lot of the research that is coming up now is showing that the, our outside world is a reflection of our inside world, is it? Yeah, yeah, it absolutely is. And and I think Jonathan's example is is a very common example, just in a different way, right? To to maybe you you listening to this, you might have your own version of that. But the reality is, there's all these things going on internally that are affecting your your life situation right now. And in Jonathan's case here, it was it was very much um, a combination of things in terms of how social he was being, in terms of that that sense of community. There was some emotional hygiene and un, unresolved emotions from the past that were playing a big part as well. And all of these things, he kept trying to get um, external fixes. He'd go to the doctors, he'd go to x-ray, he'd have injections in his spine, all of these things externally to try and fix. But actually internally, he had to work on all of those other things before he could start start to really let go of that unhealthy stress that was weighing him down and it's really important that you consider that stress isn't always what we think it is right like we said it might not be the thing outside of us maybe it's the thing inside of us but the reality is maybe it's not your negative thinking that's the root of your stress maybe it's um something that's going on inside your gut maybe it's the signals that some old metal work in your feelings is, is sending to your brain that's creating even more anxiety there are so many facets to our stress and how we experience it that when we start to just look at it from one perspective without really paying too much attention to all of the clues that we're experiencing it can really become an issue and we end up getting stuck and then when we feel stuck it's very hard to move into action and find a real healthy solution that's going to have you feeling more connected to yourself and the world around you to have you performing at your highest levels to just be ha happier and healthier and, and live a meaningful life it's very hard to do that from a place that's stuck and from a place that's that's really struggling to to listen to these clues because we're so disconnected so maybe it's time to actually connect and bring all these things together like jonathan and said so much research out there now to, to really support what it is that we're, we're talking about the, the you know the latest science is saying that just the way that we think is improving the way our cells function inside our body it can affect the way that we heal right and so there's so many 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 examples um but what's important is that you just start listening to those clues today let's not wait any longer let's actually start to say okay all right then well okay so now i get it the stress isn't outside of me it's inside of me so now what do you do next so simply put we listen so what we're going to do is we're going to break down the word listen so it gives you a great starting point to something you can do right now to start listening to yourself and start listening to those clues. Yes, so the L stands for lean in. Lean into the idea that you already have the answers within you. These clues are already presenting themselves for you to pay attention and to listen to. So lean in because what we believe is really going to remove any resistance from you being able to actually have a healthier relationship with the stress that you're experiencing. So lean in. Definitely, and I is identify the clues. So what are the clues? What's showing up for you? Is it maybe pain? Is it tension, gut issues, uh, skin issues? Maybe it's overthinking, maybe it's negative thinking or like that over, over the feeling of overwhelm or fear or um, guilt or shame. Any of these things showing up is important to identify what the clue is and also importantly where it's coming from. Okay, so 
identify the clue and where it is. Yeah, absolutely. So the S is sit. Sit with the clue free from judgment. Sit with the clue free from judgment. It's okay that it's there. It's okay that maybe anger's showing up or shame's showing up for you or that your thoughts are a little bit overwhelming at the moment. It's okay. We're, we're free from judgment. They just are what they are and because it's completely natural remember that we experience all the whole spectrum of human life the good stuff and the not so good stuff so sitting with it in a place of acceptance is absolutely key for you to be able to move to the next phase absolutely and t is about tuning in to what the clues are telling you so for example maybe you are identified that you're feeling fear in your heart Okay, so that's uh, as an example. So you're sitting with that feeling, you're sitting with that clue of fear in your heart, and you've got no judgment, no criticism attached to it, and all you're doing is asking yourself, is what is this clue telling me? And you listen and take in the first thing that comes up. Okay, it's listening to your intuition, and taking the th and just listen to that first thing that comes up when you ask yourself, what is this clue telling me? It's amazing how when we trust our intuition, we actually really get the answers that we're looking for. So tuning in is key. So the E stands for engaging. Engage now with what needs to change. So you've, you've been through the previous steps. Now you have this information. You're aware of where this, this thing is within you. You're aware now of what it's trying to tell you. Now it's up to you to engage with what needs to change. So in order for us to let go of this feeling or this unhealthy stress, we need to start to look at, okay, well then what needs to change? What needs to change within me in order to have a different experience? Definitely. And N is about network with people who can support you. Now, this is so, so key. Once you've found out what these clues are, where, this, where they are, what they're telling you, it's important to really uh, get that support you need because you can do, do this stuff on your own, but it is a very challenging and long, hard process. How I, again, when I figured out my clues and how I came to the um, point of dealing with them and changing them, to how I wanted to feel and what was happening, what I'm happening now is I got that support that I really needed. I asked for help, asked for support because that is the fastest way to create that change that you're looking for. Yeah, and when we can actually listen and we get that support that we need, that's when we get to create lasting change. We can stop these quick fixes of trying to medicate something or supplement for something or to go and speak to this person or that person and, and not do all the previous steps we can do that but it's only ever going to give you a quick fix and you're going to find yourself right back at square one and then you're going to end up reinforcing that vicious cycle even more so creating that sense of lasting change happens when we listen and and sometimes all we need to do is listen right <laughs> literally the, the you can do this right now follows those steps that we just shared because sometimes that's half the battle that is us just paying attention sometimes when we just pay attention to where that stress is manifesting itself that helps it to dissipate all on its own so that can sometimes be the complete solution as well but we have to listen first so there are four things now that you might be thinking that are stopping you from really listening and listening to yourself number one being you don't know how and that that's a valid point is not everyone knows how or even where to start so what we want to do is to give you an easy solution to start with which is our body scan soundtrack which is going to help you to listen it's going to help you to connect with and listen and sense out what's happening in your mind in your body and being able to identify those clues that are showing up yeah, definitely. So the next one is the idea that stress is still outside of you. You're listening to us and you're like, okay, yes, the stress is leaving clues, but no, the problem is outside of me. That's the problem, is that you still believe that stress is outside of you. You're still under that stress illusion that is happening from the outside in. And yes, there are, there are times when our external situations need to change, absolutely. But only start to change them, unless you're in obviously an immediate danger, only ever look to change your external world once you've cleansed and dealt with all of the things internally because then you're, the next decision you make will end up actually be more of service rather than history repeating itself so work on that perception that stress is outside of you as is inside of you definitely and number three is about time or more specifically i don't have the time to do this stuff and now if that's what you're saying 
the body scan that we're gifting you is only 13 minutes long. Okay, that's all we go to 13 minutes a day. That's nothing. Okay, that's absolutely nothing. It's easy. But if you're still saying, but I don't have the time to do th a 13 minute body scan, then it's less about time and more about the lack of willingness to do. It's that lack of choice, um, or not lack of choice, but you're not choosing or prioritizing. You're not taking personal responsibility for your own health, mentally, physically, and emotionally. So next time you, th you, say, that, you say that phrase, I don't have the time, is ask yourself, is, is that actually true? Or am I just not willing to prioritize? Am I not willing to choose what's, what, or what's serving me or what's going to serve me better for, for my own mental, emotional, and physical health? 13 minutes a day for a body scan as a starting point, very, very achievable. It's just making that choice, prioritizing it, mm. okay, and then taking that personal responsibility to make it happen. Even if you I really like no even 13 minutes a day is too much mm. just try once a week mm. once a week it's already going to start to take that edge off because you're going to start to listen mm. and pay attention to the clue and if you use that acronym of listen that we describe those steps you can make a difference just listening to it once a week mm. we recommend once a day at least checking in with yourself because that will stop the stacking so much right you won't when you wait a week to do it you then have a week of the stress right as well as maybe some past stuff that you haven't dealt with yet so if we do it daily we keep we keep it clean right we, we keep our our stress sphere nice and healthy and that's really really what we're looking for here so that we can be super responsible so the fourth thing that can sometimes cause some resistance to being able to listen is when we believe or when we feel like we can't move ourselves into action no matter how hard we try and this happens when we tell ourselves the things that we've just said about like time and not knowing how and all of these things but sometimes that okay well I do have time I do know how I just can't seem to do it I can't seem to move myself into action and if this is you and you can resonate with that there's a few key things that are missing okay that one is community and you being surrounded by a network of people who can hold you to a higher standard that is essential okay that's essential for anybody who wants to grow or change their situation from where they are now to where it is they want to be so what i would suggest is to skip ahead on the listen steps and go straight to the network steps that also applies to environment environment can play a part as well and uh, because if you know the how you're aware of your clues you 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 are very aware that they're present but you're just struggling to engage with what needs to change the reality is there is something then externally that you could help you to move you forwards and the other thing the last thing that's going to be perhaps standing your way there is any deeper issues within your conditioning meaning any past traumas any old thought patterns any things that you might have modeled in the past that served you then but are not serving you now are likely still playing a part and if that's the case for you it's really important that you reach out to a coach or an expert in this field um, that can help you to navigate you through that and, and we can happily hop on a call with you and just have a conversation um, not leading anywhere very much just to help you get on track maybe to help you recognize some of these clues and where to begin and what could be the trigger that's stopping you from moving into action that's okay too but the reality is for most people it's just a case of taking the time to stop and listen so just to wrap things up Stress leaves clues. Okay, we said it at the beginning, we said it a hundred times, stress leaves clues. It's all about getting out that stress illusion, that stress is external. Stress starts from the inside, as we've already discussed, and it's having that proactive response by listening to those clues that show up so that you don't get those stress explosions. Because for example, a lot of our clients who have come to us, if they took that proactive response at the start, they wouldn't need to come to us in the first place. Yeah, us included, right, yeah. on our own journeys. <laughs> had we listened uh, to our own clues, then we probably wouldn't have had to hit rock bottom or for, for Jonathan, like the, the chronic pain to the extent that it was. So the mm -hmm. reality is the sooner you act and the sooner you listen, the easier it is for you to then navigate life mm -hmm. and perform in the way that you want to. Yeah. But listen, if you feel like you need some extra support or if you feel like, you know, a lot of what we've said here today really resonates with you, but you're, you're still really struggling and maybe it's a bit sticky about how to begin and, and maybe even applying yourself to do it, then we're actually hosting an event coming up um, in May. Um, May 2022, depending obviously on when, you, when you're listening to this episode. And the, and the reality is, is we're going to help 
everybody that attends that event to move from where their clues are to where it is they want to be so for example if the clue is snapping at others right or be getting easily frustrated we're going to help to start to feel calm and at ease if your clue is that you, is that you're thinking negatively or overthinking, we're going to help you find peace of mind. If your clue is that you're anxious and you feel like your emotions are out of control, we're going to help you to start to feel resourceful and grounded. If you've got um, well, it's tension in your system and pent up energy and it's causing physical issues for you, we're going to help you to start to feel healthier and allow your body to flow with ease. Okay, so we're going to be moving from where you are now to where it is you want to be. For example, if you're feeling tired all the time, right, and, and maybe you're even withdrawing from other people because you just can feel the heaviness of the stress you're experiencing, you get to stop that and you get to start feeling energized and well so that you can be social in the way that you choose so that you feel like you have the energy to do all the things that you want to do. If you feel like you're being affected by other people's stress, we're going to help you learn to navigate that through an inside out approach. Because let's face it, we're not going to change the other people in our lives. You're not going to change your colleagues in the office and then suddenly we're going to become less stressful. The reality is, is your perceptions, your experience, the way you navigate the stress is going to be the key. And we're going to show you how to do that. Also, if you feel overwhelmed and like you procrastinate a lot, we're going to get you energized into action. If you feel like you're not not consistent in the commitments you make for yourself or for others we're going to help you to be so aligned that you can show up in the way that you want to every single day and that's going to be our event uh, which is our kickstarter event that's happening in may absolutely and as a result of attending this event it's going to really help you to improve your connection with yourself and with others it's going to help you to become a high performer in any area of your life as well as create that positive ripple effect around the world so if you have any questions on what we've spoken about any questions about the event or you want to reach out to us please reach out to us at info at the wellness where we'll be able to answer any of your questions and support you any way we can thanks for listening and we'll speak to you soon Thank you.